The sun was at mid-morning, casting forward the shadows of thirteen deputies standing and staring into the unknown vigilance of what makes a man's bravery into fear. The fear that quivers into the thought of uncertainty, reluctance, and doubt. Each man held his own rifle, forecasting what might lay ahead in the town of Ingalls. Ingalls was a quiet western Oklahoma town in the eastern part of Payne County. The town was first established with a livery stable, saloon, and hotel. And by the winter of 1890, a post office was built. The citizens, some of them settlers, had come to Oklahoma to stake a claim along the Cimarron River just on the edge of Cowboy Flats. And at any given moment of time, a change of peacefulness could erupt to reckless violence, like a thunderstorm without warning as it rolls across the plains. Looking down the barrel of his Winchester rifle, Dick Speed had his sights locked on Better Creek Newcomb. Dick stepped from behind the rear of the wagon and squeezed off his first shot. The hammer met the cap of the brass casing and hit Better Creek with such a force that it threw him from his horse onto the ground. The second bullet fired from Better Creek's single shot rifle missed. The third and fourth shots coming from Better Creek's revolver were relentless and sent Dick Speed spinning into a panic of a darkness. Dick fell to the street like an apparition seen and gone. Two deputies in the street let off another volley of rounds. The escaping Bitter Creek, noticing that his exit was being blocked, turned his horse hard left and into the open door of the Ransom livery barn. Awakened by the gunfire, the owner of the livery barn jumped up from the saloon's pool table and dashed for the front door. The next few shots rang out over his head as he crawled back into the saloon, resting in the icebox behind the protection of the blockhouse. A few seconds later, Dal Simmons, a student from Duncan, Kansas, was seen running from the drugstore. As the boy crossed the street, one of the deputies fired a shot into his back. The boy dropped instantly. Arkansas Tom, seeing the boy fall into the street from the deputy's misguided gun, immediately fired down at the deputies. The outlaw bullets rained down from the hotel while the deputies ran to a better position of cover. The gun battle raged on for over 20 minutes when Bill Doolin decided that he would run to the livery barn along the wooden plank porches of Front Street while the other three outlaws gave cover outside the saloon. Arkansas Tom continued to fire his rounds from the hotel window, keeping the deputies pinned down and under cover. The outlaws, under the shelter of the livery barn, saddled and bridled their horses. The deputy, still under fire from the hotel window shots of Arkansas Tom, moved in and around the livery stable. Hickson, guarding the back exit, took his first shot, exiting Doolin. The shot missed and hit Doolin's horse in the jaw. Hoping to get a shot at Doolin, Shadley had become exposed to Tulsa Jack's rifle and currying a bullet through his side. Doolin spotted the staggering Shadley and without warning, fired two times from his Winchester. The outlaw's only escape from town was blocked. Doolin, seeing the escape route blocked by the fence, crawled back to his downed horse, reaching inside his saddlebag and grabbed some wire cutters. Doolin made his way now on foot, cutting the wire and making way for all to escape, except for Arkansas Tom, who was still firing shots from his hotel window. The 
town of Ingalls grew silent. Arkansas Tom now looked from his window onto the street, a street covered in blood. Through the shell-ridden window pane, he saw Dick Speed lying frozen on the front porch of the saloon. And a walker was in the street wounded in a leg and calling for help. The horse that broke loose from the hitching post still kicking and Tom Houston face down by the livery barn. Dal Simmons, a 14-year-old boy, lay motionless behind the saloon. The wounded Shadley was out of sight and had crawled to the safety of the cave. The last sight of the outlaws was now only a trail of dust and Arkansas Tom was trapped a victim of the revengeful deputies that now called him down from the second story window. The gun battle was close to an end. Thirty minutes had passed since the first shots brought Arkansas Tom from his sleep. A sleep that he will remember in a nightmare. The outlaws his friends had now slipped away like a vision. They had vanished. His life had now fallen away like the speck in space. The man solely responsible for his friend's getaway was alone. Tom looked onto the floor of his second story hotel room and saw the piles of spent casings. He had four shots remaining in his half-loaded rifle as he heard footsteps coming up the stairs.